In this video, we're going to talk about lists, which are one of the data structures we'll use a lot in Scheme. Now, I've brought over some defines from our previous videos. We defined x, y, and z, and remember z is a sort of a weird define, and then also the function double, which we'll use in this video again. So to make a list, I say list, and then I give it what I want in the list. So if I run this, you can see I get 10, 20 in procedure, which if you remember, x is 10, y is 20, and z is a procedure. And if we put it in parentheses, it evaluates to 30. Now, what if I want x, y, and z in my list? I can quote them. And the quote says, don't evaluate this. These are symbols now. And so that'll give me the list x, y, and z. I can also put x, y, and z in a list that's preceded by a quote, and that'll also give me the list x, y, and z. One final way is if I use the procedure quote, and then give the list x, y, z, that has the same effect. So these last three examples all generate the same list x, y, and z, because each tells Scheme not to evaluate the parts of the list. Now, if I want to keep using a list, and I'm going to want to for these examples, I can use define, and here list list will be the list A, B, and C, and I'll define some other lists. I'll define list 2 to be the list with the symbol A, 2, the string hello, the symbol world, the division operator, false, the addition operator, double the function we defined above, 10, x, the symbol y, the symbol a, the character h, the list 1, 2, 3, and the result of adding 3 and 1. So let's run this just to see what happens. So if I type list, I get abc. If I type list 2, I get and you'll notice each thing in this list was evaluated. So A is the symbol A is A, 2 is 2. But where it gets interesting is the division operator evaluates to a procedure, the addition operator as well, and my double procedure. And you'll notice that X evaluates to 10. But Y doesn't because I have a symbol Y here. And then the list 1, 2, 3 evaluates to the list 1, 2, 3. But this evaluates to 4 because it applies the operator plus to 3 and 1. And again, this is because when we pass these as parameters to list, it evaluates each piece before we actually add it to the list. If I don't want to do that, then I can use quote and then put the entire list in parentheses. And now, notice list 2 and list 3 are the same, except this, it's a list. This is a I use quote and then put everything in a list when I defined it. And now you can see the difference. This is actually the exact list that I put here with nothing actually evaluated. And just to be clear, if we use list, the things we put in the list go in as that what they evaluate to. So if I say plus, minus, times, and divide as a list, then when I run this and evaluate it, it evaluates to those four procedures being in that list. Just to clarify the difference in quote versus list, plus one, two, then if I quote or put a quote in front of plus one, two, if I say quote plus one, two, and if I say list plus one, two, when I run this, you see this evaluates to three. This, since I quoted in front of it, it leaves it alone. Everything becomes a symbol in the list. In this case, the same thing happens. And then finally, when I say list plus one, two, everything gets evaluated before it gets added to the list. And so plus goes in as a procedure, not a symbol. And again, when I just put plus at the beginning, it actually evaluates the whole list. So hopefully that sort of clarifies the difference between quote, list, and then not having anything in front. So that's why if I just type in the REPL something like one, two, three, I'm going to get an error 
because one is not a procedure. So now let's talk about some list operations. Just as a reminder, let's see what list is. It's A, B, and C. Now the two fundamental operations that we're going to use when we're working with lists are car and cutter. And if I run this, you can see that the car is the first element of the list and the cutter is the list with the first element removed. And we can stack these up. I can ask for the car of the cutter of the list and the cutter of the cutter of the list. And in this case, you can see this is the car and the cutter of that list. And I can also ask for the car of the cutter of the cutter of the list and the cutter of the cutter of the cutter of the list. And when we run this, we see that we get, again, the, the cutter of the cutter of the list was the list with C in it. So the first element is C and the list with C removed is just the empty list. Now there's a lot more going on here behind the scenes and we'll see that in the in a future video, but for now, just understand that car is the first element of a list and the cutter is the list with the first element removed. So let's see some other examples. So the cutter of just the list with one in it is going to be the empty list. Now the car of this list And let's ask for the cutter as well. So the car of that list is the list four, five, six, and the cutter is the empty list because notice the first element and the only element in this list is this list. So I can ask what the car is of the car of the list four, five, six. And I'll also ask what the cutter of that is. And now once I get the car of the list, it's the list four, five, six. And so the car and the cutter of that returns probably what you expect. Okay, so the car of the car, I'm sorry, of the cutter of the list A, B, C is going to be B. And there's a shortcut for that, the catter. And that gives me the same result. So this is the car of the cutter of this list. And I can also ask what the cutter of the cutter of the list is. And I run this and you can see. So what if our list has size one? And you may have some idea because we did an example previously. So if I say the car of one or the list with one in it and the cutter of that list You get one as the car because that's the first element in the list and the empty list is the cutter because that's the list with one removed. Okay, so now let's have some fun with car and cutter and we'll define a list, list four. That's a list, the first element is this list, the second element is this list, the third element is this list. So let's run this and we'll see. So notice the car is this list and the cutter is the remaining lists. So let's see what the car and cutter of those two pieces are. So here we have the car and the cutter of the car of list four. Here we have the car and the cutter of the cutter of list four. And when we run this, we see that the car and cutter of this list is what we would expect. And the car and the cutter of this list. So here's the car. It's this list. And the cutter is the list with this removed, which would be one element. This And that would be this list. So you'll notice this list is the only element of the list that contains it. Now we can keep going here for a long time. So here are some ridiculously long car and cutter statements. And essentially what these are doing are they're taking pieces of this list and looking at them. And so when I run this, you can see I get different results. I can get any element individually out of this list that I want. So I guess the only thing I'm missing, let's say I get, I have one, I guess I don't get quite all of them by themselves. I could take the, the car of this list and the car of this list to get five and six and the car of this list to get three. And I could even get this seven or eight if I want, because seven, eight, if you'll remember is the cutter of the cutter 
actually, no, it's the car of the cutter of the cutter of list four. So now that gives me the list seven, eight. And so I can get items seven and eight out as well if I can get this copied and pasted correctly. So the car of that would be seven. And if I want to get eight out, I can't just say cutter here. That gives me a list with eight in it. I've actually got to take the car of that list. So I put a bunch of these. I haven't gone over all of them. They'll all be in the example code and run through these and try to see, make sure you understand how we're getting each of these pieces out. And notice that last piece does give us eight. We'll be doing a lot of work with cars and coders to get different elements out of lists. And you can start seeing that maybe you could write some recursive functions using this. It'll be a lot easier than doing it the way we did it here with these really long drawn out pieces. And as one last example, so remember we had op list. So that's a list with some operations. So if I say car op list, that should give me the addition operator. So I could do something like this. I can say car op list, that gives me the addition operator, one, two, three, four. So just as a reminder, that's addition. So if I run this, it adds up the things in that list. I can also get the catter of that list, which is the subtraction operator. And I can even take the car of the cutter of the cutter of op list, which is the multiplication operator. And that will add all of those together. So you'll notice this, this stuff in the list doesn't have to just be numbers. It can also be operations. Remember, functions and scheme are first class objects. And so we could do some really cool things with operations by putting them into lists and then using them later. And we'll do some examples of that in a later video. So that concludes this introduction to list. We'll actually work a lot more with lists in the next few videos.